It's the 21st century. The internet is all but ubiquitous. And people still don't know how to deal with trolls! Oh! I got into it with the British version of woke Twitter yesterday after reacting to David Lammy, an MP here who's um, anti-Brexit, getting some racist abuse. I just pointed out helpfully to him that it was probably just a troll and the best thing to do was to ignore it. You know, standard internet advice that's been the case since the 90s on Usenet, if not before. Apparently that was the wrong thing to do, to give someone practical advice on how to deal with trolls. Suddenly, my mentions were filled with a torrent of idiots who don't seem to understand what trolling is, or that someone can express an idea, a point of view, some kind of nasty mode of speaking that they don't necessarily buy into. I mean, a troll is essentially an actor. They're saying the things they do, they're presenting a, a non-kosher, a non-sincere point of view in order to elicit a reaction. And that's really similar to what writers do. You know, if we if we write a scene in, in which the villain fucks babies to death with his knife dick in some kind of unholy baby kebab, yeah, that doesn't mean we want to fuck babies with a knife dick, it means we're creating a, a sense of disgust and horror and making people recoil and see this thing as, as the villain or the enemy, you know? It doesn't mean that's what we want. Musicians write songs to elicit emotions, whether they're currently feeling them or not, or about situations that they may or may not have been involved in. Your yeah, actors play the part of people. Words come out of their mouths that they don't actually believe, you know? I mean, Adam Baldwin may or may not be racist, but that Full Metal Jacket scene has fuck all to do with it. That's a character! I mean, you understand that that's acting, right? He's, he's delivering a line that's appropriate to the character, that presents the character in a certain way, and that combines for a certain effect upon the emotions and reactions of the audience in order to better tell a story. That's a positive use of this kind of thing. Trolls are nasty. Don't get me wrong, I'm not excusing their behaviour. I'm trying to get you to understand so that you can operate effectively against them, yeah? So you can do the things that work when you try to deal with them. Do you understand? Right? Baldwin there is acting. When a troll spews off something, they are also, after a fashion, acting. Acting. If the raison d'etre of your sad little internet troll life is to elicit a reaction from someone, who are you going to go after and what are you going to say and why would that have any relation to your personal beliefs? Right? If you're going after a black guy, what are you going to what are you going to go with? Nigger, 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 nigger. Does that mean you're racist? Acting. You want to get a reaction from a gay person? What are you going to go with? Faggot, queer, degenerate, chutney ferret, uphill gardener, shirtlifter. God is against you. The Bible says what you're doing is wrong. You're going to hell. Does that necessarily mean you have to hold any of those beliefs or even actually hate gay people? Acting. And suppose you want to make a feminist upset. What are you going to go with? Cunt, bitch, whore. I'm gonna rape you, I know where you live, blah 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 blah. Does that mean any of that's true? Anything more than just spurious nonsense? Or... Acting. And why do they do it? What's the point behind it? What, what are they getting out of it? They're getting a reaction out of you, they're making you angry, they're making you overreact, and they're gaining a certain amount of notoriety the more of a fuss you create, especially if they go after a public figure like David Lammy, and it ends up in the media or something. That's what gets them off. So when you respond, when you react, when you rebroadcast them trolling you and saying these horrible things, what you're doing is like grinding your rapist. 
it's like having your pin number to your account emblazoned on your t-shirt with a big red arrow at your side pointing where your wallet is and saying get it here it's it's idiocy it's giving them exactly what they want it's giving them exposure yeah you know, even if we were talking about a genuine racist being horrible and your concern is that it normalizes this behavior what if they troll you online and you just mute and ignore them how many people is that exposed to how many people receive this normalizing message Meh, maybe a couple of hundred followers that they have. Maybe a few people who notice on on your timeline are upset because someone was horrible to you. You make a huge media fuss about it, suddenly millions of people are seeing this. Suddenly it's normalised to thousands upon thousands of people. Well done, you played yourself. So what should you do? You should fucking ignore them. There's a damn good reason this has been internet wisdom since Usenet. Right? Because they want attention, if you starve them of attention, what are they going to do? Especially these days when you can mute or people can be shadow banned or whatever, they can be screaming their vitriol into the void, trying to get a reaction, and nobody is any the wiser. Right? They don't even know to shut down their account and create a new one, because they can't tell then that they've been blocked. That, that, that's it. If you want to preserve a free internet, that is the only way to do it. If you want to crack down on everybody so that everybody is identifiable and must be held to account for their views, that's incredibly dangerous. For one thing, these definitions are fluid. Definitions of harassment, definitions of racism, sexism, homophobia, whatever. Even innocent or comedic or other remarks get held up as this. Even if you write a villain in a novel, you'll be held up to account for what your villain does, even though the whole point is it's supposed to create a reaction that people hate. Right? These this things this is out of hand. And you have to think about how the changes that you make may affect people going into the future. Case in fucking point, right, a lot of additional power has been invested in the presidency in the US. And people were okay with that while it was Obama or someone else relatively sane. But now Trump has access to those powers and Boy howdy, isn't that a lot of fun? So you have to think about what happens in the future when you bring in policies like this. If you demand that everybody be identifiable on social media, well, that's fine so long as nice people are doing it, I suppose. But what if the anti-troll tools that you're using end up outing trans people, outing gay people, causing whistleblowers to have no venue upon which to blow their whistles? You know, there's massive negative effects that can come from all this. Uh, beaten women sometimes seek solace and, and friendship and support online. What if their abusive partner can now find out that that person who they suspect of being their partner is? What kind of reaction is that going to have? You know, you have to, you have to think. Associating real life with online wipes out anonymity, and yes, that may take out trolls, though most trolls will have the technical skill to get around it, so it's mostly only going to affect normal people. But the broader, knock-on, larger effect is enormous and massively negative, especially when all it takes to deal with a troll is click, click. That's it, you never have to see them again. They're gone, howling into the wilderness. Whereas, if you get them blocked and banned or whatever, Oh, oh! Then they know they found someone who will react. Especially, especially if you go to the media. Oh, that's gonna double, triple, exponentially increase the amount of trolling you're gonna get because you've shown yourself to be a victim. And that's such a good idea to show weakness to a pack of hyenas. That's a really a great idea, isn't it? You fucking retard. Worse, you want people arrested for this kind of shit, for essentially harmless comments online that you can ignore with click, click. You want to arrest people for that. Have you never gotten angry, lost your rag and said something you regret? Do you think you should go to prison for that? Cast your mind back. Dilly do, dilly do, dilly do, dilly do. You remember Caroline Criado Perez? She was the uh, woman campaigning to put women on banknotes and this became a big public thing and all oh, Oh, it was obvious she was going to be a lol cow. You know, a, a frumpy, angry feminist engaged in a pointless argument about money. Something, something just 
utterly pointless. It was obvious she was going to get trolled from the get-go, and lo and behold, she got trolled. She got trolled hard. Now, you may remember that two people who were involved in the trolling against her ended up being arrested and serving time for it. I'm sure you probably would applaud that. But here's the thing. The people that trolled her were a pair of absolute sad sacks. What good did it do to prosecute and jail that pair of half-set jelly moulds? It didn't do any good. You know, unemployed, substance abusing, sad little people who, as it turned out, had been attracted to the trollathon by the media fuss, further reinforcing my point. Put them in jail, what was the point? They're actually fairly sympathetic figures because they're just so tragic and sad and just wanted attention. That's why they did it. So if you starve them of attention, why are they gonna do it? Hmm? I mean, look at them. The only thing she's gonna murder is a curry and he couldn't rape a quadriplegic on roofies. Acting. So, so they said some mean things online and that's terrible and naughty and everything. And yes, it absolutely is and we shouldn't have to put up with it. But there's a lot of things we shouldn't have to put up with in this world that we do have to. We shouldn't have to work, we shouldn't have to worry about getting food to eat or a roof over our heads, but you know, the world's shit. It's imperfect. And sometimes, there's no way to stop something that doesn't have a bigger cost attached to it. So do you want to solve the problem, or at least minimise the problem, or do you want that nice little dopamine hit from being a self-righteous prick? If you want to deal with the problem in a, in a practical and pragmatic way, teach people to ignore it, to deny them what they want, to deny them that reaction. Just let it go. Because that's what actually solves the issue. If you stop reacting, if you stop taking them seriously, where's the motivation to do it? If you learn how to mute and shadow ban and otherwise deal with them, then they lose all their power, they lose all their influence. Whereas, if you create this huge fuss, if you go running to the media, Oh, someone said something mean to me on the internet. You're giving them what they want, you're giving them power and you're also providing the government and other bodies excuses to control this wonderful free frontier of new media that we are all participating in. Why would you want to do that? Are you actually retarded in a non-pejorative sense? Because that would be an excuse I guess. Don't feed the trolls. Don't. Zang.